Bolo ran for her dear life as he chased relentlessly. She ran through the neighbor's garden all the way to the street. She almost got killed by a moving car. But she stopped running just in time as the driver slammed the brakes. Jeez, are you nuts? The driver yelled out. She was shaking with fear as John caught up with her and gripped her arm. Bolu burst into tears. John apologized to the car driver on her behalf and walked her away. She woke up with a start. Hello there. Thanks for joining me. My name is Adiola. I am a publisher, an author, and a playwright. And I've published many books. I'm also a teacher of both adults and young children. That is why I will be dropping some training videos very soon to teachers and stay-at-home moms. Stay glued to this channel if you're interested in those videos. They are coming. You are welcome to Ola Books TV. We will talk about it everything i mean everything we talk about is book related themes plots settings writing tips and tricks publishing and more when we talk about themes we'll talk about you and the society issues that make or mar us issues that bring smiles to our faces and maybe tears if you're joining me for the first time i say a big welcome and if you're a returning viewer, I say welcome and thank you. Today, we want to look inside my newest title, The Mission House. I will talk briefly about the making of the book and then read chapter one and make my comment. Before we move on, I want to say that Everything I'm wearing today, my hair, my jewelry, clothes, are all from Ola's Fashion Mansion. The website is linked in the description below and the address of the store is displayed on the screen. If you'd like to check the store out, they have so many beautiful items. Now, stay tuned while we get into today's business. Okay, so I call this book my miracle book. Yes, and you're going to know why pretty, pretty soon. First, let me start by saying thank you to everybody that has purchased a copy of this book. If you are yet to buy one, what are you waiting for? It is a beautiful book with a beautiful story. And I have linked in the description as well all the reviews this book has re received so far. So if you have not yet purchased a copy, what are you waiting for? Maybe you were waiting for this video. You know, I'll always make a video about every one of my books. So the video is here today. After watching this video, I want you to link the book in the description and go get your copy. When you get your copy, send me a picture and let me know what you think. I always love, love honest reviews. I will be waiting for your reviews. So to start with, this book is a novella. And what is a novella? A novella is a narrative prose fiction whose length is shorter than most novels, but longer than most short stories. Okay, so uh, why did I label it a novella? I did because it is, um, this book is, I mean, this is my third novel, you know, and it is the shortest of them all. I made it short for a few, for two reasons. The main reason actually is that um, when I started writing this story, there are so many things I want to put into this story. There are so many characters in it that I really want to expand on. And uh, I got to a point in the writing that I thought that if I expanded on each one of the characters, the, the, the book will might sound so confusing. People might, might not know who to concentrate on. People might really not know who the main character would be. So I decided to make it short. I'm going to make this book a um a series each one of my book always have a different idea even though i am a literary fiction writer i write across board i pick you know issues situations i see in my neighborhood in my surrounding in my in my social group or things that i hear about and i just you know write stories about them in a way that you know 
everybody can learn about in a way that everybody we, we make everyone who reads it think about their own lives to see what they're doing right or what they're doing right, including myself. <laughs> My writing speaks to me as well. So what was I saying? So I was saying the reason, one of the reasons why this book is a novella is because I have so many things I wanted to write, but I didn't want to put so much information into one book. So I decided to stop at some points and then I will continue in another one. That is to tell you that when I tell you that I have published 10 books, I am still counting. I thought I was going to stop, take a big break after my 10th book and then come back. But you know what? The idea came again. The title jumped at me. I had to pen it down, you know, and I put a few words down. So my 11th book is already in the making. It is already in the making. All right. So don't let me do too much talk. Oh, yes. So the second reason why this book is a novella is because I do not like the idea of people reading and not finishing what they are reading. You know, this book is so interesting. It's a page turner and it is just, you see, it is about, it's less than 30,000 words. So you should be able to finish this in a couple of hours, one day, two days, the most, you know, depending on how much time you put into reading it. But one thing I must tell you is about this book is that when you start to read it, you will not want to drop it until you get to the very end. So you might finish it in one day in some house if you're a fast reader. So I already said the book as a novella and the mission house why the mission house why the mission house it's because the story is tailored around a particular family and the family is in a mission house okay the family is a christian family and don't you think i'm writing something against the christian family i'm writing something for the Christian family, something we all can learn from. The book is dedicated to God for his infinite mercies. I must say that I, it was at the last minute that I dedicated this book to God. And um, at that point, at that time of the year when I was rounding up, because I gave myself the target of having 10 books by my 45th birthday, and I thought this was not going to happen. Because there were so many things. Like I said, I do other things. Uh, this is not the only thing I do. I write is not also the only thing I do. I'm also a child care provider. And I was so stressed out with the daycare work towards the end of last year. It was so much stress going on. And I was just holding on to God, you know, to, to help me uh, through. And I thought because of all of that stress, I would not be able to publish this book. I already had um, um, Let's Go to the Park. It was ready, waiting to be published. And I already have um, my other book, which I will do in the next video. The Waiting Room 2 was also ready. But this was unfinished. I mean, the Mission House was unfinished. And I was so, so, at some point, I was a little discouraged. But I encouraged myself. Just like the Bible said, David encouraged himself in the Lord. I encouraged myself. There was nobody to encourage me because nobody would lose. It's my work. It's not like I'm working for someone else. So why am I stressing myself so hard to get it done? But that is me. That is what I do. Even though I do not have a supervisor, I am my own supervisor. I make sure that I get things done when they need to be done because I pay myself. So I do not like... um lazy people around me because I'm not a lazy person. So I make sure that when I set a goal for myself, I do my best to make sure that I achieve that goal. But if I cannot achieve it, I know I've tried everything and I just let it go. So I thought this book was not going to happen by the end of last year. But wait, I waited and I saw what God could do. How I was able to get it published, I do not know, but it happened. It happened and I just at the point where I was uh, publishing this book and putting everything together to go into publishing I just said who will I dedicate this book to then I looked at everything around me and I said for God's infinite mercies for seeing me through for even making it possible for me to have this book I am dedicating the book to him that is why the book is dedicated to God Almighty. I just share the testimony. Hmm? Share your own testimony. 
What are some challenging things that you've done in time past? What are some challenging things that you didn't think you could go through, you could do, but you did? Share. I want to hear them. I just shared mine. Okay? Encourage me as I have encouraged you. All right. So, our chapter one is the household. And it, I always like to put pictures in my novels because I am a visual person. You know, even though I listen, I read, I do all kinds of things. I want to watch videos. I want to see pictures. I believe that pictures and videos explain to you more, you know, about what the topic is. Chapter one, the household. Bolu ran for her dear life as he chased relentlessly. She ran through the neighbor's garden all the way to the streets. She almost got killed by a moving car. But she stopped running just in time as the driver slammed the brakes. Jeez, are you nuts? The driver yelled out. She was shaking with fear as John caught up with her and gripped her arm. Bolu burst into tears. John apologized to the car driver on her behalf and walked her away. She woke up with a start. Bolu needed to find John. She got out of her room and tiptoed to John's room. He was not there. Where could he be? He must be in the boardroom. But why would he be there without her? She tiptoed to the boardroom making sure she woke no one. And of course, she caught him with another girl. They were both finishing dressing up when she opened the door. Bolu turned around and ran up the stairs, and he ran after her clumsily. His old legs almost betrayed him. He finally caught up with her atop the stairs, panting. Please, Bolu, let's talk about this. It's not what you think, John pestered. So what is it? Bulu asked angrily. She came here to talk to me about her mother. Her mother never stayed at home and she needed someone to talk to. John answered. Just like I needed someone to talk to until you introduced me to something else. Bulu retorted. Not like that, John continued pleading. I will let this pass, but I do not want to see that girl here ever again. Period. Bolu walked away angrily. As she closed the door to her room, her mother came out of hers, wondering what the noise was about at that early hour of the morning. She knocked on Bolu's door and she did not open. It's nothing, mom. I'm fine. Bolu responded to the knock angrily. All right, dear, her mother replied. John, what are you doing here? Bolu's mom, Omodara, asked as John tried to sneak away. I heard someone moving around and wanted to see what was happening. John answered with his heart in his mouth. I was just on my way to my room, madam. Thanks, John, Omodara said as she returned to her room. John hurried to his room, grateful that Omodara did not hear his terse conversation with Bolu. While in his room, John looked at the time. It was four a.m. He had not had a wink of sleep. He had spent most of the night in intimacy with Doris, and being caught was the last thing he wanted. It was a Wednesday, and he was never with Bolu on Wednesdays. Why did she go in there? Why was she looking for him? He must be cautious. He risked losing his job if he is caught. For some strange reason, Sleep eluded him. He laid back on his bed, staring at the ceiling. At some point, he got up and walked to his window, taking in the yard's scenery. The beautiful flowers, modern red brick and metal fence, and the newly installed remote control gate. Pastor Alesh indeed renovated the building in a grand style. The mission house looked nothing like it used to be. Everything old about the building was gone, including the occupants, except for him and Pastor Alesh's family. He would have counted himself as a part of the family since he had served them for so long, but he never felt like a part of them, not since Pa Alawunli passed. No one could ever make him feel right like he did. He thought Pastor Alesh would be wise enough to treat him right, 
but he never did. He always wanted everyone to know that he was a servant. Why did he not leave the family? He served the father and now serving the son. I am sorry, I will not be able to finish reading chapter one. I'm going to stop right here because I do not want to make this video too long. But I want to stop right there. And as is my custom, I want to talk briefly about the, this part of the story that I have read. I mean, where I stopped reading. Let me go over that again. No one could ever make him feel right like he did. He thought Pastor Alex should be wise enough to treat him right, but he never did. He always wanted everyone to know that he was a servant. Hmm. So my question is, was he a servant? I want to talk about how we make people feel. I want to talk about how we feel about ourselves, about, you know, our jobs, about what we do. I want to talk about what our intentions are about people around us. Now, John is a servant. And he was saying when he was walking with a particular person who was the father, the founder of the church, that man made him feel once it made him feel loved, didn't make him feel like he was a servant. He treated him with so much respect. He, you know, he just loved him. And John felt so secure. He was just so happy being with him. But now he died and he's now a servant to his son and he does not like the way the son is making him feel. The son treats him like a servant. Well, my question is this, is he a servant? If he treats you like a servant, you are a servant. So what is the problem? So this is, you know, why I say that on this channel, we'll talk about life. We'll talk about you. We'll talk about me. Who are you? How do people make you feel? How do you make other people feel? You know, some people will make you feel like you're on top of the world, like you're the best thing that has ever happened around them. Other people will treat you like you're nobody, like you mean nothing, like you are nothing at all. But what I want to say is about you is about me. How do you feel? You know, sometimes when people's reaction or people's treatments make us feel less of who we are. We deem it fit for ourselves to tell, to look into the mirror, to talk to ourselves and say, hey, look here, Adiola, you are the best. You are the best thing that God has ever made. You are who God wants you to be. You are doing well. You are doing great. You are extraordinary. Even when we're going through difficult situations, we need to talk to ourselves. We need to, to let ourselves know that we are doing well if we are truly doing well now he's a servant and he's being treated as a servant and he doesn't like it so maybe he, he should change his profession that's another thing if you are being treated like who you are and you do not like being treated like who you are maybe just maybe you need to change what you do maybe that is not where you belong because if you are a teacher and people are treating you like a teacher you should love it if you're a nurse and people are treating you like a nurse, you should love it. You should be proud of yourself. But if you are a pastor and people are treating you like a pastor and you do not like it when they're treating you as a pastor, maybe that is not your job. So that is just a little bit I have for you today. We just need to think about what we do. If what we do is something that we do not like, maybe we need to rethink and change what we do. Thank you for staying with me today. I will be back again next week. And I say stay tuned for more juicy videos. If you like this video so far and you have watched it up to this point, I want to say that you click on the subscribe button. You like this video and you hit on the notification bell so that the next time that I drop another video, you will be notified. Thank you. Enjoy your week and have a blast. Bye.